right, so here's low power shave biopsy, clinical rule out melanoma. Anyone can get this from 2x? Nevis. Yeah, junctional nevus is one idea. Any other things in the differential? Lentigo. Lentigo, good. And sometimes it's really hard to tell junctional nevus apart from lentigo because there are a you know pretty common type of, of nevus that has a lentiginous pattern. And it kind of has overlap with dysplastic nevus sometimes. It has elongated reedy, increased pigment. But then when you look closer, you'll see little nests of melanocytes and single melanocytes. Um, and so I, I, I like to call those lentiginous nevi or lentiginous junctional nevi because clinically they look like a lentigo or like a dysplastic nevus, a thin, you know, kind of spreading out macule that has sometimes a little hazy border and oftentimes has a lot of pigment. So when we go closer, we see elongated reedy, we see a lot of pigment, and it does look like nests, right? But this is, of course, uh, when you start during path, this looks like, oh, those must be nests, must be melanocytes. But once you've done this for a little while, you recognize those, what look like nests, are actually enlarged tips of the reedy, right? And those pigmented cells are actually keratinocytes, not melanocytes. And so for any beginners watching this, um, I know my residents all know this, but any beginners watching online, if you see a really darkly melanin-laden cell in the epidermis, it's usually going to be a keratinocyte holding melanin pigment, not a melanocyte. So it's kind of paradoxical. And if you see a really darkly pigmented brown cell in the dermis, so here's the, here's the keratinocytes, all of these, and in the dermis, if you see a really heavily pigmented cell, it's usually going to be a melanophage, a histiocyte or macrophage that has eaten up melanin that's fallen down from the epidermis. And so usually not going to be a melanocyte. Now, there are exceptions. There are both types of nevi and sometimes melanoma that have a really abundant pigment. But more often than not, melanocytes have kind of a pale gray cytoplasm. And when they have pigment, it's just kind of a little powdery brown, not this real dense, chunky brown. But here you can see perfectly... This is like kind of the hockey ship, the hockey stick shaped. Let's see if I can say that. It kind of looks like a hockey stick. At least that's what I said for my, my fellow Caitlin Campbell uh, a couple years ago. Um, she's from Canada. So in honor of her and, and her husband, who's also a pathologist, I always like to say they look like hockey sticks um, for my Canadian viewers. And then uh, also, or, or looks like a boot or like, you know, Italy, maybe you know, turn mirror image of Italy in this case. But in any case, though, what happens is these reedy elongate, they get increased pigment in the basal keratinocytes. And let me bring it up here so you can see the cornea there. That, that looks prettier. And then what happens is if you have a perfect cut, you can see the whole thing. But if you go over here, look what happens. It looks like they're islands floating. But if you were to cut deeper into the block, you would see that this connected up to the reedy. It's just like right here. Look, imagine if you cut just a little deeper, you would no longer see that connection. And so you have to think in three dimensions in, in Dermpath, even though we're looking at a two-dimension slice of tissue, there's really three dimensions to it. And so uh, that takes a little bit of, of um, practice at first to, to be able to visualize that. But that's what's happening here. And, you know, one way you can tell is, look, all those things that look like nests, they all line up right where the tips of the other reedy are. See, they're just lined up perfectly at the same kind of level as the reedy tips. And if you really struggled, you could do a stain like SOX10, and what you'd see is scattered melanocytes in here, but that all these pigmented cells are actually SOX10 negative, and they'd be cytokeratin 5,6 and P40 positive. I mean, you don't need to do these things. Uh, if I am worried about a melanocytic uh, proliferation in the background of a lentigo, I'll do a SOX10, or you could use a MART1. That'd be fine. So this is just a solar lentigo. With practice, it's an easy diagnosis to make on H&E. Ooh, a little bonus, too. Very subtle. I don't know if we can get, get the pick up, but see that pink stuff right there in the papillary dermis? That pink stuff with little cracks in it is keratin-derived amyloid. It's the stuff that we see in the diseases called macular amyloid and lichen amyloid. It is not related to systemic amyloid or light chains or myeloma or anything like that. Not related. It is just pigment. I mean, I'm sorry. It's just keratin and other proteins that have fallen out of the epidermis and kind of congealed together in the papillary dermis. And you can see it in macular and lichen amyloid, but you can also see it in association with seborrheic keratosis or occasionally, I guess, lentigo, basal cell carcinoma, a wide variety of epithelial lesions. So nice lentigo, but why would we, uh, you know, put this in a study set? Oh, and you could even also, if you wanted to make the argument that this out here is either a lentigo with big cells, see how the cells get much bigger and puffier? Or you could say that it's a large cell acanthoma, which is 
a lesion that I think of as basically a solar lentigo, usually one without the reedy that has bigger cells. And no, I did, while we're talking about solar lentigo, I will say that this is the classic pattern of solar lentigo with the, the long reedy um, that look like boots or, oh yeah, and uh, Ron Rapini likes to call them dirty puppy dog feet, that they look like the little feet of a little puppy dog that's run through mud puddles or something. Um, but uh, the other pattern, and one that I see just as often, maybe even more, is basically a flat atrophic epidermis with underlying solar elastosis that has increased melanin pigment in the basal layer. So kind of like this. And then when you get that pattern with larger cells, some people call it large cell acanthoma. It has a lot of overlap to me with pigmented actinic keratosis. See, the cells are bigger and kind of jumbled at the basal layer. But you don't have parakeratosis. And normally in an, in an AK, an actinic keratosis usually has para, although some people say, well, pigmented AKs don't have para. And so I think that's because some people call them pigmented AK and some people call it um, uh, large cell acanthoma. And in my most of my career, I just called them solar lentigo or I'd say solar lentigo and pigmented AK because they often mingle together on the same biopsy. And I didn't think say large cell acanthoma because I felt like a lot of the colleagues I worked with were not as familiar with that term being used and I didn't want that to create anxiety um, and then uh, but here you know we everyone uses that term so I'm fine with using it and so if you're wondering about well, what does melanocyte look like here we go look these are melanocytes right here that guy with the gray cytoplasm that one right here and if you're watching online I have a video about melanocytes versus keratinocytes that kind of shows some really perfect examples and some easy ways to tell them apart and you can check that out. I'll try to put a link down below. Okay, so anyway, now long tangent of, uh, of discussing everything you could ever want to know about solar lentigo. But why do we recut it? Well, this is why. What is going on here? Lentigo still, right? We can see not as pretty as the other, but longer reedy with increased basal layer melanin pigment in the keratinocytes. But what are these? And more importantly, why are these? It's kind of esoteric. Here's a closer view. Anyone want to take a stab at what those are? Dead keratinocytes. Dead keratinocytes. Apoptotic keratinocytes, or some people say necrotic keratinocytes, or dyskeratosis, dyskeratotic cells. We use all sorts of different names. But usually when we see apoptotic dying keratinocytes in the epidermis, we think of it as a thing that goes with interface dermatitis, right? Like lupus or a lichenoid variant of interface like you know lichen planus in which case they're at the junction the basal layer but here they're like floating along in the mid layer of the, the spinous layer and they're actually all throughout there's more of them over here there's like little clusters of them and they're all throughout the specimen so i had a hunch when i saw this case a while ago and i thought i think i know i remember this case really well because it was the first time i ever got to confirm this i was like i think that I know why those are there. I think this patient might have an acute sunburn in addition to their chronic sun damage and solar lentigo. And thankfully, there was a clinical photo of this lesion and the skin, the entire skin of the patient's back was bright red, really bad, recent sunburn. And so yes, they had chronic sun damage with the lentigo, but in addition, they had a recent sunburn, which was clearly visible on the clinical photo, and it was so great to have a confirmation. So these are what's been called sunburn cells. So when you get an acute sunburn, if you're wondering what sunburn looks like under the microscope, there it is. Parts of the epidermis get damaged so much that they die, and of course that will eventually repair itself, the keratinocytes will, but the DNA, potential DNA damage, you know, um, has already been done and may or may not repair itself. So uh, if you're watching this online and, and curious, if you're not a non-medical person curious about sunburns, that's what sunburn looks like, but um, in, even though that stuff will go away and get fixed, some of the cells may have had their DNA damage, which can lead to the production of precancerous lesions like actinic keratosis or even uh, uh, squamous cell carcinomas, basal cell carcinoma, melanoma, other types of cancers later. So this is why we try to avoid excess sun exposure, as my awesome derm uh, residents all know very, very well. Okay, there we go. Sunburned lentigo. How about that? Who can talk? For 10 minutes about lentigo and sunburn, this guy right here, all right?